So here we are talking about our streamed live lab. Okay, 16 or hey, percent by mass of copper. The whole point of the lab, the main objective is to find the percent by mass of copper in brass. Okay, so what is brass? Brass is an alloy. In fact, we've talked about alloys when we talked and looked at individual uh, metallic crystals. In fact, we actually studied face-centered and body-centered simple cubic structures. It's not important to actually know the actual crystal arrangement here is not part of the course, but it's cool to recognize that we're talking about metallic bonds. So if we look at copper, and I'm just, just gonna put a repeating crystal arrangement of copper here. And whether it's face-centered or body-centered, not really important in my diagram. So there's pure copper. Now, before you draw them, I'm going to replace a couple of them, okay, with zinc. And there's a reason I'm able to do that successfully, and that's because zinc has about the same atomic radius as copper, all right? And so it fits into position. If zinc was bigger, it would destabilize the crystal, right? It would make it bigger in different spots, or if it was really small, Okay, it would fit in between them. So zinc has about the same size, so it fits in the same position that copper would. So this is called a substitutional alloy. Now, what, why do we make alloys? Because alloys, by mixing in elements into the same crystal pattern, we change the properties of this substance. Copper, okay, can bend, but it's not shaped very easily. Okay, by adding zinc, we increase the malleability. If you've ever looked at a brass instrument, whether it's a French horn or a, um, um, uh, I'm playing the horn now, uh, or a saxophone, there's some intrinsic, uh, in, intricate parts to that uh, device, and it has to be made um, uh, perfectly to get the sound you want. So adding zinc gives us the ability to bend and shape that to the exact uh, shape that we want. Also, it's darn pretty. Brass gives that nice luster, a golden kind of shine that copper alone doesn't have, okay? Also, it changes the conductivity. So we make alloys to, to, to mess with the properties. But bottom line is it fits in. Now, what we're doing, back to reality, we want to find the percent by mass of copper. Since this is a percent by mass lab, in terms, every time you hear percent by mass, you should be thinking, oh, I'm dealing with part over total times 100. And so what we're after here in this lab is we're looking for the mass of what? Copper that's in this crystal and structure over the total mass of my brass object. Our brass object is going to be brass shot. Okay, it's basically BBs that are uh, made of copper and zinc. Okay, so what am I going to do to get the copper? We're going to use spectrophotometry, but before I do so, okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to add nitric acid. Now, nitric acid is HNO3. It's a strong acid, so of course, what I'm really adding is free protons and that nitrate ion. Now, the protons are a strong enough oxidizing agent for reasons we've explained already to make zinc go to zinc plus two. But the proton isn't strong enough to make copper to go to copper plus two. So if I was just to add H pluses, I would dissolve the zinc on the outside, but not get the copper. And that's problematic for me for two reasons. Number one, my solution will be clear. I can't use spectrophotometry, I need color. And second, if I just use hydrochloric acid or H pluses, I probably won't get into the inside where the zinc is hiding because zinc's not just on the outside, it's on the inside. So really, the star of the show in nitric acid is the nitrate ion. The nitrate ion is a strong enough oxidizing agent that can do what? Force the oxidation of copper and zinc. I know you're tired of me showing this, but there's that nitrate ion. Here's copper. So it's a strong enough oxidizing agent to force the oxidation of copper. Who resists oxidation, by the way? Copper oxidizing the plus two 
is negative 0.34 going this way. And nitrate is what? Positive 0.96. So in an acidic environment, the nitrate ion is really strong enough to force copper to oxidize and of course zinc. Notice where the proton is. That's strong enough to oxidize zinc but not copper. So what we want to do is use the nitrate ion that will oxidize both. And that's the real key to the lab because by oxidizing both, I'm going to force the entire sample of my copper to be a solution of zinc plus two and copper plus two. And I guess I'm keeping with, I guess I should, this is purple. So I'm going to have zinc plus two and copper plus two ions in a solution. However, both will make complexes. Both will have the idea of pulling the water in as a ligand because they're small and highly charged, but only one is gonna have a color. The copper plus two is gonna give us that blue-green color. Zinc plus two does not have any color. Why? The zinc has a full complement of electrons. So there's no place for electrons to transition to when they absorb light. So the copper is gonna provide the color. The zinc that we dissolve is in there, but it's not gonna have a color. So it's the color that the copper plus two complex, which is by the way this, copper, okay, with six water molecules, makes a complex that's plus two, okay? And that's gonna have that blue solution. Now, what are we going to do? All right, real quickly, we're gonna use the color of the solution. So, we're gonna take and measure our brass shot. We need a total mass of brass right there to do that at the end. So we're gonna mass our two pieces of brass. Okay, and it's a, a two little circles of brass. I'm gonna add nitric acid. Okay, you're gonna add some nitric acid. I'm gonna try to add just enough, I don't want any excess. In the process, nitric acid is gonna make a brownish red gas, okay? And there's a reason why that's gonna occur. And I want this balance in your, uh, in, in your reaction somewhere, somewhere in your data, okay? The nitrate ion is gonna to go to NO2. NO2 is that brownish red gas that's given off. At the same time, the copper zero goes to copper plus two. I want this balanced. Okay, now, eventually this solution goes to completion and I've got a really dark blue color, even though this might be purple, sorry. I don't know my colors, all right? All right, now, we're gonna pour this solution into a volumetric flask. And we're gonna dilute to the 100 milliliter mark. So I'm gonna make 100 milliliters of this solution. The whole point of this lab is to find this molarity. Molarity is moles over liter. Hello, we have the liters. Spectrophotometry is gonna make me solve for my moles. That's what we're after in spectrophotometry. I'm gonna solve for the molarity. Knowing these two, I solve for the moles of copper using the what? Mole concept, and that one mole of copper is about 64 grams, we can get the grams of copper. And then we times this by 100, and we have this. So how do I get the molarity of the dissolved copper shot? Okay, real quickly, I'm gonna run through the um, lab, and then we're gonna go do it. Okay, so let's go do it. Okay, to do this, we're gonna have to take our spectrophotometer, have our molarity in the bottom, have our absorbance up top, that's measuring how much light's absorbed, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a Beer's Law graph. We're gonna kind of calibrate the spectrophotometer to have a relationship, a linear relationship. Hey, and we're, I'm gonna give you, or you're gonna make three solution. It's called a serial dilution. I'm going to give you 0.4 molar. You're going to make 0.2 molar. From that, you're going to make 0.1 molar. 
and from that you're going to make 0.05 molar. And these are our standard solutions of copper plus two solutions. So you're going to make from a copper plus two solution, which is blue, you're going to have four known solutions. And what you're going to do, going from light concentration to, to, to from light to dark, right? This is going to be the darkest, this is the lightest. You're going to put it in the spectrophotometer. This could be um, 0.05 here. You're going to read an absorbance. Then you'll have 0.01. You're going to read an absorbance. Then 0.02, an absorbance. 0.04, read an absorbance. It should go up. The more stuff, the more copper in your solution, the more it absorbs. And you're going to get a linear relationship. We're going to find a best fit line that goes through them. The computer is going to give you y equals mx plus b. It's going to give you the slope and the y-intercept. And this is how we solve for it. So once we make these solutions, put it in the spectrophotometer to make this graph, here's what we're going to do. We're going to pour a little bit of this solution into a cuvette, okay? Run it through the spectrophotometer. We're going to read the absorbance. Just read it. And whatever it is, of course, that's our Y. We're going to get that from our known solution. Look what we have. We have the slope, y-intercept, and we solve for x. Guess what x is? Your molarity. So x is equal to a minus b over x. And this x party, people, is going to equal your molarity. This x is your molarity and all you need to do is now solve for the moles because you know how much we made convert to grams I'll walk you through that okay that's what your homework's been so we're gonna start this lab now the first thing that we're going to do is we're gonna measure our brass shot okay total mass we're gonna need that I'm gonna dissolve it up here under the fume with nitric acid and the students are going to make a serial dilution. They're gonna be given 0.4 molar copper plus two, and they're gonna make some 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.05 using MV equals MV, all right? So we're gonna do that now. So they're gonna take two pieces of our brass. There it is. All right, so there's a beautiful little brass made of copper and zinc, all right? And they're going to mass it out and give that to me. Okay, I'm shooting down, guys, so I'm not going to give away your faces. Okay, but you're going to help me out. Now, make sure you measure the container first, right? Or you can subtract, or you can tear out the weight, right? Put the container on there. Now, we're going to use an evaporating dish party, people, to put these in. Now, did you mass? So, what did you get for the mass of those uh, two? Should I just take this out? Yeah, okay, now hold on. Uh, Someone mark. Someone mark this evaporating dish so we can identify what it is. Now you guys are doing this, the, you guys that are going to be doing the, um, the solutions. Okay, you need to, you need to put, a, put your, uh, put gloves on and goggle up. We're dealing with copper plus two, it's definitely okay. skin irritant. And we don't want any in our eyes. Sorry, I don't have any holiday goggles. The red and green are gone. Wow. Okay, I had the. Oh. All right. I don't know what's wrong with me. Okay. So um, we're going to take our copper. Did we write on our evaporating dish? Yeah. Okay. Okay. I guess we don't have to since you're the only group in here. <laughs> okay. True. It's a good practice. Okay. So I'm putting the two little guys in here. And what's going to happen now is using uh, MV equals MV. Okay, you guys have the 0.4 molar solution. This is known. You're going to make 0 0.2, 0 0.1, and 0 0.05. Okay, and you only need to make about a half inch of each. So do your MV equals MV to do. It's called a serial dilution. Think with me. If I want to make a 0 0.2 from a 0 0.4, aren't I diluting it in half? So take whatever volume you have and dilute in half. 
And if I want to make a 0.1 from a 0.4, I'll take a quarter and times and add four times as much. If you don't understand that, do MV equals MV. Okay, so you're going to watch them kind of do this, the serial dilutions. And at the same time, I'm going to pour some nitric acid on this guy under the fume hood, and I'll show you that in a second. Okay, you guys can get to work making the serial solutions. Okay, so there is 0.969 is the mass. And all I'm going to do now is turn on the hot plate a little bit because I want to increase the rate of reaction to make it warm. And I'm going to add nitric acid. And I need to get some gloves on too. You guys now are going to make the serial dilution. You're going to take this 0.4 molar and make 0 0.2, 0 0.1, 0 0.05. If you need to do MB with MB, me and my host can do that. Don't ever be your guest. I think I take care of the guest. Oh, okay. I dropped my glove. All right. All right. So here we go. And I'll be there to help you. But in the meantime, you guys are watching me add the nitric acid. Now, the reason for the nitric acid is the nitrate ion is the star of the show here. Okay, so I'm going to add some nitric acid. I'm trying just to add enough. I kind of have a good, been doing this all day, so there's going to be a little bit excess nitric acid. But that color, that gas you're seeing, okay, that's why we're in a fume hood, is that NO2. Nitrate has a plus five oxidation state for the N, and it's plus four in the NO2. Okay, so you're gonna see that brownish red gas is the NO2 leaving. And I'm increasing the temperature, all I'm doing is increasing the rate of reaction. I'm trying to get this done as fast as possible. But now, right now, we're dissolving, okay, that copper. And that's what we're doing. I'm gonna let that run for a few minutes. Okay, so you can see exactly uh, where the, um, the copper shot is um, dissolving. You can see the, the bubbling of gas. You can see the color of the red gas. Kind of a very pretty demonstration here. But we're looking to keep going until all of the bubbles have stopped and all the copper shot has been oxidized. Remember, zinc zero, copper zero. That's a solid. Zinc plus two, copper plus two is aqueous. Okay, we're gonna let that cook Okay, again, just heating to increase the rate of reaction. And we'll check on this. I'm gonna see what the students are doing with their serial dilutions. Okay, so if you have 12, you're gonna take six of that? Yeah. Okay, and then you wanna dilute it to 0.2, so that means you've got to dilute it to what? If you have six milliliters, how much water do you have to add to get the new volume that will cut it in half? Six. Correct, because you wanna be at 12, perfect. Okay. okay, that's what you're doing now. We just diluted it as we did them. Oh, did you dilute it yet? No, not yet. no, okay, so we're going to measure six yeah, of that. Six, yeah. And let me get you a pipette oh, yeah. so that if you need age. extra or less, you can just add that perfectly. Yeah, so we get the, whole, right? the whole lab is based upon making sure that these solutions that you're using to make the linear relationship are known. So make sure you spend your time correctly, all right, because. Yeah, put six in there, and then, because this isn't, 10 is the max on this. So all right, so let me, get you, put, let me get you a pipette. Wait, no, yeah, we put six, six, in, put six, in, six in, yeah. in there. Put six, yeah, put six in there. Making solutions is the important yeah. part of this course. Is that six? Just get this to six, and then we'll go yeah. back to 12. So that is... Okay, a bunch of clean pipettes you don't want to contaminate. Your lab is, the strength of your lab is about how well you make your four solutions, well, three solutions, really, okay, because well, the first one I gave you, and I have to dilute both of them? Because this is only a six mass. No, because we're just going to do it in here. I'm going to make this okay. to six. So what they're doing, party people, one. to make the point two molar, okay, they measured out six of the point four, and then they're going to dilute it to 12. So if you double the volume, Okay, of your solution, you're gonna have the what? Concentration. You can see that MV equals MV. Wouldn't that be at the 5.5? Oh, yeah, you gotta go up to that mark. All right, so. Just like maybe put that. Definitely important skill. I know you guys at home haven't made solutions, but they're using MV equals MV. In fact, I'm gonna write that out for you so you can see what they're doing, okay? 
if you don't follow. And I sure, I'm sure most of you guys do follow, okay? And they're spending the time to make sure that concentration is accurate because the whole lab is based upon that linear relationship. And they do the same thing to make point one, and do the same thing to make point oh five. Careful not to go over that. Yeah. yeah, this is terrifying because you can't. <laughs> so then I would definitely use a pipette. Yeah. 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 Use a pipette Just for a few that. drops at a time. All right. So we're going to. You got to go to eleven. So it's like the middle. Again, the reason for the solutions, my friends. Yeah. Let's take a. This line. While they're working on the yeah. on the next solution, I'm going to take a peek at what's going on with our dissolved. I don't see any solid. Sometimes you can see a solid left, but it looks like we're dissolved here. All right, so I'm gonna take off the hot plate and this little soup has all the copper and zinc plus two ions. Remember the zinc doesn't have a color. So therefore, hello, the color that we get to do this lab is all about, okay, all about the copper. And that's how we get the, cop, the mass of the copper once we have the concentration. So let's go back to the table. This is all ready to go. And we're gonna make, we're gonna pour this into a volumetric flask to make a hundred milliliters. And this is the what, the 0.2 molar? Yeah. yeah. Woo! <laughs> okay. But that, you know what? Your lab's gonna come out better the, the more accurate you make this. The bottom's still not there, it's at the 11 point. Student L was a little bit pushy about the meniscus, <laughs> okay, but good for her. Uh, okay, cool. Eric. Now, so that can go in the second test tube as 0.4. So we can just put this back in the 0.4, right? That could, um, now you might, do you want to use some of that to do the next, the, the next one? Because think about it, to do the next one, which is 0.1, that's a fourth of this concentration. Right, point one is a fourth of point four of, 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 of point one is a fourth of point four, correct? Yeah. So you need four times the volume. So if you take five millers of that, you dilute to twenty, or two point five, and dilute to ten, so right? We're doing point one next. So you're doing point one. So that's just half. So I would measure. Well, it's half of the solution you just made. Three. You could do that, Wait, so but you have you have plenty of you have plenty of that solution, so you can definitely take. That solution that you just made, that's what, 0.1? Mm -hmm. yeah. And use half of that because you only need one cuvette, so you definitely could use half of that to and dilute to the same amount. Do you need a new um, test, uh, a graduated cylinder? I think so. Yeah, yeah, I'll get you a clean one. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Wait, so what are we saying? I'm confused. Uh, student E wants to cut that solution in half again, and he's right. So there'd be three millimeters. What size graduated cylinder would you like? Uh, the same one. Probably. 25 or a 10? Three. I mean, we need 12 of it, so. Let's do 25. 25 is fine. Yeah. Okay. Let's do the same as Here's the 25. All right. This is the painstaking part. Okay, so we take half of that, half of this. Wait, so we take half of the 0.2 molar? Right, do MD equals MD. If you want to cut a concentration in half, you've got to Wait, double the, the volume. So if you're gonna take point one that you just made, you can use that, I think. Okay. Okay. So we're okay, doing. So we, we don't have to remember, you're gonna need about an yeah. inch of it to fill a cuvette. So you can use, take, um, uh, whatever you need, two milliliters, and then add two to that, right? If you're gonna cut that solution in half, okay, you can take five milliliters, and then dilute that to ten. Having a concentration is doubling the volume. Or you could start with the original 0.4 and quadruple the volume. If you measure 2.5 milliliters, dilute to 10 milliliters. It's the same thing. You make those decisions. Carefully add those concentrations that you know in order from, oh, no. uh, um, can I put water in one? Hold the bottom when you add them because they'll spill over. Right. Okay. okay. So make sure you know what the content. You're going to add those four order. solutions oh, and clear, yeah. and of course, water to one. Wait, so is water on the right or the left? Whatever you decide. So you're a lab, even though I just going? jumped in and ruined it. Yeah. Okay. okay. How much do we put in each? About three quarters. Fill that cuvette. About Ooh. three quarters fill. Hold. When you touch a cuvette. <laughs> the rough side, right? Rough edges, right. Use the, the, the ridged edge. Okay. There you go. There you go. Got it. Got it. <laughs> it feels very sad to feel yeah. like, ah, I got it.
I, I did this. I, I did the other one, so okay. I knew that I would not be. So you're going to fill those up, and now, we're, now the lab's going to go fast. That's the slowest part and the most painstaking, I know, for those at home. Uh, yes. Okay, you probably See, grab the sandwich and say I'm done. Okay. Um, that's probably All right. Okay. And I'm going to reset this up, because now we're going to run the lab and use a spectrophotometer. Yeah. Okay. What I want you to do is click on this little button right here. Absorbance. Yep. And I want you to put the, let's get a cubit with water and put it into this spectrum. And actually, you know what? Um, let's click uh, experiment. Leave that open. Okay. Hit experiment, experiment. And hit um, uh, calibrate. And I hit the spectrophotometer. And it's going to warm up for 90 seconds. What it's doing is it's making sure that that lamp that shoots the incident light with the full spectrum is as bright as possible, okay? So that we have to get the, the best data possible, best reading. So you have a weak bulb or a bulb not illuminating the most amount of wavelengths. You can't absorb a lot of wavelengths, especially at the lower end, okay? <laughs> <The wavelength. laughs> Don't worry, no one's watching you. Oh, okay? Yeah, not recording. <laughs> Why do we always have to do the dummy? Uh, I like three of us. Yeah, it's actually, we uh, well, group. you're in a later period, so I can always practice uh, all the things I made mistakes in the early periods. But, uh, Wait, you. you just handed me this, right? This yes. Is point. Okay. <laughs> just making sure. Okay, so we're warming up the calorimeter, and do you have a some water into a cu uh, blank cuvette? No, it's Okay, so get on this, Evan, over here. Give me a cuvette oh. with just water. Okay, you can use, right. remember, you're using the regens, and we're going to put that into the spectrophotometer. Or use the one that they used. Layla's dead. Okay. okay. Uh, student formerly known as Layla. Formerly. Yeah, yeah. Formally, yes. Yeah. If, it w if that was her name, it's changed now. Okay. 100%. <laughs> okay. So, and, and you, can, you can visibly see party people from um, one side to the other that the, con that, that the, what, the colors are decreasing. Okay. And that's what the spectrophotometer is going to do. It's going to use the, the depth of the color to how, know how, many, how much what ions are in there that absorb the light. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to change the position. Put the, um, put the water cuvette into um, that little water holding the ridge side. Insert it into the little square of the um, uh, spectrophotometer. <laughs> okay. Make sure that the light is, not, is going through the non-ridged end, right? Okay. You don't want the light through the ridges. Where's your ridges? Left and right? You're good. Oh, yeah. Good. The ridges will go on this side. The light's going that way. Okay. Now, hit finish calibration on the computer. Yep. Here we go. And so what it's doing is, is it's shooting light through the what? Water. And it's basically doing what? Saying, okay, it's a zero absorbent. Say, okay. Okay. So we now just calibrated. Now, okay. Hit that little screen again. Yep. Hit configure collection, hit absorbance and concentration, and now you see that little graph? Yeah. We're gonna, the computer just picked, okay, the peak absorbance, or an absorbance, it just picked this one. Now this is, an, this, this, this is a nice spectrophotometer, it measures into the infrared spectrums, so that's why it still goes up. But in any case, it's picking the peak absorbance. Why is it doing that? We're gonna tune this spectrophotometer just to measure the best wavelength it measures. So it's, 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 it's picked this peak. That was part of one of your AP questions. And so what is that value there? I can't read so yeah, I mean, Write that down. This is what we're measuring. The spectrophotometer is measuring wavelengths or measuring only the 706.0 706. nanometer length wavelengths of light. It's only going to pick that. Why? Because it's really good at measuring that. We're tuning the spectrophotometer to measure best that wavelength. That's the peak uh, absorbance. 706, yeah. 706 nanometers. So, okay. So now hit OK. Wait, which one is this? All right, now close out that pop up window. Now we're going to make our Beer's Law graph. Okay. We're going to start from the lightest concentration, take out the 0.4 molar, take out the 0.4 molar out of the spectrophotometer, using the ridged end, ridged, ridged side, okay, yeah, okay, put that back into its place, 
And now, starting with the lowest concentration of the copper solution, which is their 0.05. This one, right? Yeah. You sure that's 0.05? Well, it's the lightest. Okay, okay. This one, right? All right. <laughs> that's true. That works. Make sure you're putting the light through the non rich side. Good. Okay. Now, what you're going to do is hit the green button for collect. It just measured the absorbance. See that dot in the middle? Yeah. Okay, but it doesn't know the concentration. So click the little wheel, the keep button. Now type in, what is this, 0.05? Yeah. yeah. 0 0.05, you're telling it what the concentration is and it's gonna hit okay. So now I just plotted that. Now take out that solution, put in the 0.1 and we're gonna build a graph. Making sure we're holding it with the root side. <laughs> and putting it into the spectrophotometer so that the, the, the ridge side is not going through the light. Now, hit the keep sign, and this is what, point? One. Point one. And look at that, it's plotting a line. Okay, going to the next most concentrated one. So that'd be now looking for point um, two. two, the second darkest solution. And it makes sense, if there's more of the copper, there's gonna be more absorbance. And absorbance is a negative log of the transmittance. Okay, gonna hit keep. Point two. two. All right. All right, and good. And do the next one. And you don't see that third point. That third point is up to the right there, all the way to the right. So it's hard to see it, but it's there. That third point is right here. That, that the graph is expanding to each point. Okay, so here's the most concentrated, the standard solution. I gave you point four. Type in point four. Hit enter. And there you see your four points. And notice there's a linear relationship, which makes sense. The more concentrated, the more absorbance. Now, what we're gonna do now is hit stop, hit that red bu button, and we're gonna hit the linear regression button. We're gonna make it a line of best fit here. Okay, cool. Now, this is gonna give me my y equals mx plus b. So this is gonna give me my slope and my y-intercept. Okay, for those at home, okay, please read the y-intercept. What's the B value? Uh, 0 0.0821. 0 0.08214. And the slope is, um, which is the M? 6.909. 6.909. You guys would know. Guys at home, I'm going, to, I'm going to make a digital copy of this so you can see it. You guys should hit print. Print and make four copies right now. Okay. Oh, the three copies, because there's three of you. I don't need one. <laughs> you sure? <laughs> I was part of the group. Oh, no. Uh, All right. You have to put a name in it. Just put our name. Be a nice little keepsake, mm. I guess. Let's see. Do All right. <laughs> For those at home, I'm going to... I'm going to post this so you can put this in your lab, but it's really about the what? We're using this relationship of known solutions. The other e. wow. Okay. Yep, 230. I don't know which Just one. Just make three copies. Yeah. Three, yep. And hit printer. Okay. Okay. Now, while that's printing, we're almost done with the lab. We have our relationship. Now, the AP problem that we've just seen a couple nights ago, they said, well, if the absorbance of an unknown solution is like 1.5, what's the concentration? And you guys read it right? 1.5 would be here, straight line, you would read the molarity and they give you a range. Well, the real way we do it is use the linear line. What's the x, the molarity? What's the y, the absorbance? So what I'm going to do now, party people, is I'm going to take that copper solution and the zinc ions that we just dissolved, I'm going to pour it in here. I'm going to dilute to the 100 milliliter mark. I'm going to do that for you because I know there's some excess nitric acid, okay? And there's a reason why I'm making a 100 milliliter solution to solve for the moles. I'll explain again if you forget. So stay tuned. Stay right here. I'm going to grab that evaporating dish that had your nitric acid. Okay. I added nitric acid. For those that forgot, here's your shot. And here's the color. Here's what I have here. I added nitric acid. And this is what I have left. So all of the shot okay with a brass is uh i'll come over here all of your brass is now in that solution so all the copper and zinc ions the zinc doesn't have a color so it doesn't interfere so what i'm going to do is i'm going to pour this 
I need a beaker of water. And I could let you guys do this. I know you guys could do this, but it, I definitely had to add excess nitric acid to get this done in a time period. We could have calculated exactly how much I would need to, to make sure the nitric is gone, but that would, again, the reaction would go slower over time. Now I'm washing out the evaporating dish. Add some more, and I'm diluting to 100 milliliters in this flask. There's a reason for that. If I know exactly the volume of the solution, and if the Beer's Law graph in the screen is gonna give me my molarity, couldn't I solve for the moles? Oh my gosh, Oshkosh, yes. Convert to grams, and you have the grams of copper. Okay, so I'm gonna use my pouring skills to dilute to the 100 milliliter mark. And I'm gonna need some more water. Student E. Fill me up. Which one? Oh, the one that's closest. Right. Come on. Water. Uh, I don't, I don't know okay. Like water. That's H2O for us. That, okay. I got it. All right. We're using distilled. It's an aggressive group. <laughs> They're fighting over to who can get to grab the water. Okay. And can you give me a clean pipette? I think there's one right there because when I get close, I'm going to pipette to the um, carefully. I don't want student L to yell at me. <laughs> She's uh, into the meniscus. All right. Although I am a good pourer. Oh gosh, I'm so good. Okay. <laughs> There's some confidence there. Yeah. I don't know if you if I get Layla over here, she would like that that I am right on the meniscus. So I didn't need that pipette. Just showing off here. Okay. Oh, wow. To my 8,000 subscribers. <laughs> All right now. I'm gonna turn this in twist, and all I'm doing here is making sure that it's, it's what? It's mixed. This is your unknown solution. Okay, now we're gonna run this in a spectrophotometer. Okay, so give me an empty cuvette. I'm gonna pour this because I do not want. Okay, give me a, go get an empty cuvette if we run out of cuvettes. So this represents 100 milliliters Okay, 100.0 milliliters, okay, of that. So I ridged end first. I'm going to fill this up. Okay, and I'm just gonna pour this up here. And that's good. And I'm gonna put this in also, just in case I spilled some. So I'm making sure that um, taking out this sample, which is your, right? And now I'm putting in something that's a little lighter. Okay, and you can see its color is gonna be somewhere in between the colors you used, kind of cool. And I'm making sure that the light goes through the non-rich side. And all I'm doing, party people, is reading this absorbance. Okay, I'm not gonna make a new graph. I'm just reading this absorbance. So that absorbance is 0 .0866. 0.086, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing here. Okay, I'm being overly aggressive with my data. 0 .0 we're certain of 0.86, how about that? 0 .86, what's the point? 0 .86 is good for me. 0.86. Well, it's kind of guessing, so I would definitely, I'm definitely certain of 0.86, okay? All right, that's your absorbance, okay? Now, guys, we have all the data we need. I'm gonna go back to um, we ran a Beer's Law graph. I'm going to post that. Okay. What was our y-intercept again? Uh, it was 0 0.08214. Okay, that was our y-intercept. What was our slope? 6.909. 6.999? 909. 909. Okay. Now, that was what our four solutions gave us the best fit linear lines and Beer's Law graph because Beer's Law states that there's a linear relationship between what? Concentration and absorbance. Now, what we're going to do with this because this is why, hey, why is it absorbance? Well, guess what? From an unknown concentration, what was the absorbance? 0.86. So that is our y. So if we have 0.86, Solve for x. So when we do the math party people, 
we solve for x, it's going to be 0.86. Okay. And by the way, was this a positive or negative, this 0.08? That the y intercept. Positive. That was positive. Okay. Um, so y equals mx plus b. So to get this in this side is a minus. So minus 0 0.08214. And then we're going to divide by the slope. And all I'm doing, party people, is the y, which is the absorbance, minus the b, which is the y intercept, divide by the x, divide by the, uh, sorry, divide by the slope, my bad, m, gives you the value of the x. And the value of the x, party people, is your molarity. Okay, remember in the AP question, you just read the, the bottom thing, but we got an absorbance of 0.86. All right, so what is the value? Anyone got that for me? 0.86 minus 0.08? I got, oh, point. Divided by the whole number. What's, so what do you get for the value of x? I got 0.1125. Okay, that's good. Everyone, everyone agree with that? It'd be 26, because it would good. round up. Yeah. Okay, um, that of course is your x. What is our x? Our concentration, our concentration is molarity. You just solve for the molarity, which makes sense because that color was in between the other colors. Okay, we're ready to rock and roll. We just got a molarity. We just got a molarity. 0.1126. And I measured how much of that solution. 100 milliliters, but molarity is moles over liters, so that's 0 0.100 liters. So now I'm going to solve for moles. 0 0.1 times 0 0.1126, I think, is 0 0.01126, yes? And that's what? Moles. Moles of what? What had color that was dissolved by the nitric acid in this? the copper plus two. So all I need to do here now is convert 0 0.01126 into grams. How do I do that? Okay, well, we should know that. 0 0.01126 moles. Get rid of moles. One mole is equal to how many grams on the periodic table for copper? Atomic mass is 64 grams, right? So times that by 64, what do you get? Point seven two oh six four. Point seven two oh six four. Oh six four. And that's grams of copper. Hello. What's our whole lab about? Part over total times a hundred. You guys, well, this is the mass of the copper. We have that right here. So I'm gonna put that in here. Point seven two oh six four. What's the total mass of the brass sample that you started with? 0.969. And all you do to find the percentage, you times that by 100. And what is your percent by mass of copper? What's that like, 75% uh, or something? 74.4. 70, let's do two sig figs or two numbers because Seven, our... 74.37. So 74%. So oh, right, yeah. Okay, and I got a piece of shot that was assayed at 70 into low 80s. They, were, they didn't give me an exact number, but they believed it was 70% into low 80s. Great number, okay? So pretty cool percent by mass lab using the light, okay? And that's the lab. Wow. Painstaking making the solutions, but because you took the time to make good solutions, you had a good line here. Everything is based upon this Beer's Law line, all right? That's the lab.